Oh, I've been collecting books since I was a kid, probably uh, seven or eight years old. I collect history, mostly history books, but I also collect uh, ephemeral items. I collect uh, old documents and photographs. I, I love to find uh, treasure troves of, uh, of papers and, uh, and photographs and you name it. If it's, if it's old and it has relevance to the local area, I collect it. There are books here from the uh, 15th, 16th century. But uh, California history is what I specialize in, and uh, pretty much anything I can find on California and the West, I'm gonna grab. This is a space that was built specifically as an archive building. Uh, it was the first building we built uh, on the ranch here, and uh, it's, it's only about 1,200 square feet, but it has 13-foot ceilings, so we can go up with stuff. Um, and it's, uh, it's uh, well protected, uh, you know, as far as climate is concerned, and of course it's got security. But it was built for the archive uh, and built so we can keep uh, ambient temperature and humidity in here. Um, like I say, the bookshelves are all uh, built up the walls and up in the center uh, so we can house, uh, you know, make the maximum uh, use of the space. Uh, so use the cubic footage instead of the square footage. I'd like to show you some of the things in my collection. Um, uh, here we have a couple of what they, what they call gold pokes. And these were bags that were made uh, during the gold rush, the California gold rush in the 1848 uh, through 55, uh, and made to uh, put gold dust or, or uh, gold uh, uh, nuggets in uh, as they take them out of, the, out of the field or out of the rivers and things. Uh, they would put them in these bags, and they pokes as they called them, and they would uh, be taken from here to the assayer uh, and of course poured out into the assay trays and then are uh, actually the scales and they'd be weighed and then the miners would get money for their gold. These are uh, very rare. They're made out of, uh, this is uh, probably deer skin that these are made out of. They're, they're just fascinating and they're just very, very rare items to have anymore. Uh, as we're here, let's, uh, let's look at this. This is a kind of an interesting item. Um, uh, this is a, a letter from on a Yolo senator. Yolo, this is in California. Uh, Yolo senator letterhead, but it's a letter to uh, uh, historian Frank Latta, uh, who was working on a book, uh, his book, The uh, Dalton Gang Days at the time, uh, and it's a letter that was uh, typed for Littleton Dalton, um, uh, telling Latta that uh, you know he was interested in what he's doing. There were a range of time to set up. Anyway, signed by Littleton Dalton, one of the, one of the Dalton brothers. Uh, of the Dalton Gang fame. And better than that, uh, I have another letter over here that is uh, typed and signed by Emmett Dalton, uh, another brother. Emmett Dalton is the only one of the Dalton brothers who, of the Dalton Gang who escaped uh, death uh, at the Coffee Bill uh, bank robberies. The Daltons were trying to be a little bit more clever than they should have been, and they tried to hit two banks at once. But unfortunately, Coffeeville was ready for him, and it, it was just really a, a terrible bloodbath. But anyway, this is a letter after Emmett got out of jail. Uh, he went to Hollywood and was uh, set up to make a, several movies, and uh, Frank Latta had written him to try to put a book together. And these are in, just some interesting things that, that uh, make up a collection. Uh, if I go over here in this local area, we have a uh, 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 couple of outlaws or bandits or outlaws I guess that were called they were known as Sontag and Evans or Evans and Sontag and these were actually local uh, local men who uh, went the way of the train robber uh, ended up robbing several train trains and were eventually uh, captured but this is an interesting letter when they were in the real estate business I was at a Modesto and it's uh, signed by uh, Sontag and Evans the realtors just a fascinating example of what goes on in the, uh, in the world of a, of a bandit, of a robber. Let me take you over here, because there are a lot of other things that are, that are pretty interesting. Um, as we, uh, we walk through the, uh, the archive here, uh, I have a wonderful um, document that is actually uh, uh, signed by my great-great-grandfather, Colonel Thomas Baker. Uh, and it's on a slip of paper, which is what they used back then, because paper was scarce. Uh, and, and it's actually a loan note. Uh, uh, Colonel Baker borrowed uh, $500 in gold, 
uh, for one of his little projects. He had a lot of projects going on. That's, that's how Bakersfield got started. Uh, this was done about six months before he died in 1872. But this is one of the very, very few documents that exist with the uh, signature of Colonel Thomas Baker. Uh, now in this file we have some very interesting things. Um, this might be of interest to you. This is a picture of uh, St. Paul's Episcopal Church. The inside of it, of course. And it shows uh, the pews and the altar. The interesting story on this is the altar was purchased by Mrs. Lloyd Tevis from the church where President McKinley last prayed prior to being shot and assassinated. And this is the altar. It was brought to Bakersfield by Mrs. Lloyd Tevis. And this is a little photograph of the outside of the church. You can see how quaint this little church was. There were lots of, of very interesting, pretty much national, uh, uh, nationally known uh, items and things going on in Kern County that, or in Tulare County, that people don't know about. And this is what's so fascinating about all of this, is you, you find these things and you can save them. And this is what we're trying to do, is save these things for posterity, so people will learn their history. Now back here, we go farther into the depths of the collection, I have a very interesting photograph that I think you might enjoy. Uh, and this is a photograph of Traversio Vasquez. Uh, taken at the time, taken uh, pretty much just before he was hanged uh, in, uh, I think, 1874. Vasquez was a, uh, what would you call a noted bandito in California. The, the ladies loved Traversio Vasquez. In fact, I have letters and notes uh, from uh, ladies who visited him in jail uh, as he was waiting for his trial and sentencing. Um, and it's just, it's just fascinating what people uh, would do in, the, in this day. So um, in the, even in those days, you find that um, outlaws and bandits have a, there is a stigma and there's a fascination with them by people. And this is a writing by Traversio Vasquez. Part of the material that came from the jail cell uh, as he was waiting for execution. But if you save these things, we save them for the future. We're we're only keepers of these things. I may have I may have purchased many of these things, but we're only the keepers of them. We don't really own this stuff. It's kind of like land. We don't own it. It's it's uh, it's something that was put there by the Almighty, and we're only mere keepers of it. Now, this, the, the, the biggest question now is, what do you do with things like this? And this is where, of course, the big college libraries and the public libraries come in, the difficulty of which is, of course, money is scarce. So I'll continue to grow this library. It'll grow and grow and grow. I think we've grown out the doors. Uh, and uh, even so, we'll just put in some other method of storage until there's just no more to grow.